Hey, good afternoon, everyone. We're very happy for today's GTP seminar to have Jovan Wang from Harvard, who is going to tell us about l unification and non-invertible symmetry of a standard model from gravitational anomaly. Jovan, please. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank Hisham Sati, Professor Hisham Sati for the invitations. And also I, I congratulate the people here have a very successful quantum program in physics, geometry, and topology. I, I heard about a good reputations uh, from the seminar series, and I really been honored to be speak, uh, invited to be speak here, speaking here. Uh, let me just start with saying that there are some slides available, and uh, you don't need to take notes. And I also share the Dropbox links in case you need it. I try to upload to my website. Somehow there's a login issue I haven't been able to. So uh, regardless, uh, you can you can find the slide some sometime later. So my title, as uh, Hishan just introduced, is uh, written here, and they'll be divided divided into two part of talks. And I will use the be beginning part to introduce why this ultra unification implies, and then go to this more contemporary hot topics about non invertible symmetry of the QFT. In particular, we look at the standard model. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this work is done collaboration with uh, several people, including a recent work with Pavel Boutreau. And this is based on this uh, non invertible symmetry paper, which we post V2 just recently. You should look into the new version. And then ultra invocation is based on a serious work uh, done in 2000. But this is not really popularly uh, mentioned or emphasized. Uh, so I want to kind of uh, review that. What, what is that concept might be useful? And then I will also acknowledge our collaborators, the Yen Wan from Binsa and Yi Zhongyu from UCSD, and some upcoming two of your work with uh, Manchin and uh, Xinping Yang from Yale University. And please in interrupt me, ask questions, and interact with me anytime. Yeah, so sorry, Jim, I think the, oh. the, the sound is, is low. Maybe you can oh, really? raise the sound or raise your voice. I Thanks. See. The sound is low. No, I see. Let yeah. see what's yeah, thank you. How about how about right now? Uh yeah, very good. Thank you. Better? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Okay, great. So uh let me begin uh ask you a simple question. Say if you uh enter a run to play a chess and then you find out this uh chess ball has uh two missing pieces, can you tell which one is missing? Like this one, can you tell which one is missing? So just quickly, if you can tell, you can just uh, reply. So make sure everyone is following. Huh? Yeah. What? Rook. Yeah, someone say Rook. Yeah. So you can see there is some kind of a reflection symmetry with respect to this axis. So even if you don't know the chess game, you can see, oh, there's a knight here. There's a bishop here. Oh, this must be a, a tower, tower or Rook, right? And everything here is the familiar things. But then you have find one and you're so happy you say, okay, so there's another missing one. And so what can you tell this one is? So you say, oh, everything is all known. So you must follow some principle. So what would be this one? Uh, answer for this. Queen. Oh, someone said queen, but you see this is king, right? So the left-hand side has a king, while the right-hand side is not a king, but a queen. And the reason you know is you know the, the, the rule of the chess. But uh, do we know the rule of the particle physics or standard model on Earth? If we just uh, put the, the quarks and leptons in one family or one generation together, it seems accidentally they do have some numbers similar to the chess man pieces. And there are 16, almost 16 of them. And the one first generation has U and D quarks and the uh, neutrinos and the electrons. But everything what is uh, confirmed, for example, our draw here, the 15 pieces, including the left hand one, that couple to the SU2 uh, gauge, SU2 weak in forces, and they are the SU2 doublet, doublet draw in this way. And they are U quark, D quark, up and down, and there's a neutrino and electrons, and which is a lepton. So I use this notation through all the talks and just be familiar with the this uh, cartoon figure and the notations. And right-hand side is uh, SU2 singular, so they don't couple to SU2 weak. 
and then there's a missing right hand neutrino we never form. So that's a kind of a analogy. If you get it, then you you know my talk is about that. I'm questioning whether we really have a right hand neutrino in the vacuum we live in. Part of it is standard model, but what's something else? So that's a question. And importantly, there are three family or three generations. So there are three right-handed hypothetical neutrino people use, E, mu, tau. And if they are missing, how many are missing? Maybe three of them are missing, and maybe two of them are missing. So, so this is a question. What is a missing stereo right-handed neutrino? Where is, where is? And if, if we don't really find it, does it imply something else? OK. So in the chest, actually, Quinn is replaced this uh, stereo right-hand king. So we can ask the same question. We have a looking for the you know all paradigm standard model and extend it slightly, just adding right-hand neutrino. But maybe something is missing. We may be totally wrong, or people in the past it was wrong. Well, wrong. So we want to do something to um, question this. And so the ultra location actually, indeed, is proposal say that uh, uh, we may not really require stereo right-hand neutrino. And, and, but there is a good reason to introduce that right hand neutrino in the past. And a good reason is that the right hand neutrino indeed can carry some uh, anomaly index, which I will introduce. And in certain cases, the familiar local anomalies that perturbatively captured by Feynman graph. But today I'm using a case that the anomaly is not captured by, at least in a rigorous way, it's not captured by Feynman graph, but it's a non perturbative global anomaly. And many audience like uh, uh, Urs will be familiar in this expert. Uh, so the, this cancellation, uh, without including some of the right-hand neutrino, but replacing that missing right-hand neutrino to uh, new topological field theory, quantum field theory, TQFT, or conformal field theory sector, CFT, uh, then coexists with the quantum field theory medium or vacuum of the standard model is called uh, ultra invocation as one of the scenario. And the TQFT there will be using in the end will be a three plus one space time dimension, you know, 4D, or in some case, it may extend to a 5D bulk uh, due to the anomaly inflow. So there are some choices and I'll enumerate some of the choices. So that's basically the plan of the first part of my talk. Any questions so far? So this claim can be shocking if you heard the first time, simply, having no right-hand neutrino in our vacuum means we cannot find any such particle or any identical right-hand neutrino anywhere, then it can imply the vacuum we understood in the past may missing something else that we haven't emphasized in the past. And that's what I'm trying to uh, emphasize. So the major claim is that uh, in my talk is that the first part is that in, in addition to strong industrial weak forces, uh, I'll give some logical derivation, uh, more physical motivated, and uh, you know, uh, demonstrate by mathematical constraint like cobaltism, and such that there exist topological forces interact with uh, the standard model. And this topological forces will interact standard model with the additional gap topological base sectors, and whose low energy has the Lorentz invariant topological field theory at the lowest energy state. And also possibility of conformal field theory, although it seems less likely, and that will be similar to the unparticle physics scenario, uh, maybe jo how Georgia will study in the past. But the, the emphasis today is due to there is some uh, global non particular global anomaly cancellation, so we introduce this. So all these sectors are introduced as uh, in almost inevitable as a consequences when we take the assumption that some of the stereo right neutrino is not there in our vacuum. And also another assumption turned out will be important is that some, at least some discrete subgroup of the barrier minus lepton symmetry is preserved. And then due to the quantum gravity reason, we know we have known that people argue that discrete or continuous symmetry, whatever global symmetry it is, or even higher symmetries, if they are preserved and uh, gauged to, uh, to this uh, quantum gravity high energy scale, then if it's preserved, they must be dynamical gauge or broken at some higher energy scale. But in my talk, I will I will later emphasize um, I'm going to this dynamical gauge scenario. OK. And next, uh, so the proposal will be this, uh, the known forces with TQFT topological force sectors and, uh, and then interact with the TQFT and CLT 
and uh, to cancel some anomaly. And that anomaly index will turn out to be mark 16 in Z, Z mark 16, which is Z16. And that's the scenario called ultra location. So any question? Okay. So yeah. yeah. If, if you have a question, feel free. So, so you know, because because some people may not stay in the variant, so the the scenario like give you some, uh, some change of the picture we we are drawing in the past is like strong electrical weak other than this and possible hypothetical guard forces. This is uh in my in my case will be uh can can be included like SU five guard, but they may not be included. It's it's not necessary in my case, but I, I'm trying to give the result even within the standard model. Uh, we can already have a room to include uh. TKFD or topological sectors in a almost inevitable way to cancel some uh, non perturbative anomaly. And even before we discuss the gravity or unification for quantum gravity, I think we already have a window to uh, have some make progress in BSM physics and for the high energy phenomenology, phenomenology. This will be beyond the particle physics because the TKFT does not quite have the local uh, point like operators to detect them. However, there's extended a line of surface operators, and these are the gapped, gapped extend objects. And for the CFT scenario, this will be gapless on particle CFT. So it's also very connected to the program uh, people here at the NYU Abu Dhabi here study this uh, quantum matter applications, and it's basically highly evolved into the mass and phases principle. So this will be a picture we will go in, in the very end. A any more question? Can I ask one thing? Yes. Yeah. When you say, you say topological force, is it yeah. something by field? Like what you call yeah, yeah. So it is, it will be described. Call, what you call the transignments field? Yes. The source, topological yes. force? Yes. yes. So this will be colloquial way to say force. So force is interaction. So any interaction between matter field is what I call force. So this interaction is not done by Young Mills or Maxwell theories, but for some discrete gauge forces. So, and in certain cases, can be transignments. Uh, but we are going to describe TQFT in the same dimension in standard model, so it will be 4D or 5D. So that's not quite a conventional transignment theory, but there is still some topological field theory you can write down and use uh, some of the ideas from cobaltism, and we can still write some of the 4D and 5D TQFT. And one thing you should have in mind is that just like people who was going by theory, but there is also debate about which gauge group people use, SU5, spin 10, uh, party salon, spin 6 times spin 4, possibly models on Z2. So these are the possible scenarios. So for in my case, I will not emphasize which TQFT in the end it is because they're really subject to experimental constraint. But the main point is that there are some candidates and many, many such TQFT that can be enumerated and construct. And which one is certainly is the important question if we really think in this scenario, we are going to test it at some point. Yeah, so the question is that the topological force is the interaction between objects including actually quarks and leptons to the hidden TQFD sectors. And within the TQFD sectors, uh, there is also interaction. So let me just uh, remind you of the picture is like, inside our bodies, we only find up and down quarks in the neutron protons. And there's a detailed confinement strong forces. These are all known forces. So everything in this box is all known. And the, the talk about the, the, the emphasis of contribution contribution of this uh, work or resource introduce a particular scenario to think about things outside the standard model box. And other than strong force EM forces, uh, they interact, you know, we see the light and then this interaction of the uh, EM. So I want to say that uh, there is a possibility of the discrete baryon minus lepton forces that couple to anything charged on the baryon or quark number and lepton number. And indeed, all the quark and lepton, they do carry B minus O charges. So there's a, a potential, potentially discrete gauged interactions connect the sectors within the standard model to the hidden sector. So all the electron and the quarks and leptons are kind of uh, discrete gauged on the B minus O. And the question is that whether this B minus O is preserved still to high energy. And then the scenario by itself possibly doesn't sound too new if you just consider this discrete gauge group. But the new ingredient is that the reason to aiding those sectors is due to the missing of a right-hand right stereo neutrino that is stereo under the SU2 weak force, right? 
and that's called right hand because it's it's uh, stereo on the SU two. And uh, then then there's a room that we can add this new sector to replace the missing stereo neutrino to cancel the same anomaly that right hand neutrino saturate. And interestingly, the superconductor analogy in standard model in the weak uh, fourth sector of SU two uh, U one. Hypercharge breakdown to U1 EM has an analogy to superconductor of the BCS type, body pooper sugar. So the analogy for the theory of the TQLT sector actually has some contemporary understanding as topological order medium uh, can realize as some topological quantum computer that do quantum computations in some sort. So in some sense, this is also uh, a scenario that the standard model can live in on a boundary of uh, 4 plus 1D, which I will make more detail, topological superconductors. So there's an analogy of this topological version of the phenomena that also play a role possibly for the uh, the future BSM physics. It hasn't been not well known yet, but that's the thing. And that interaction is through media between the sector and that, through the discrete B minus of force, and which is the interaction through the topolog topological uh, interaction, some discrete gauge force. And all things together are cancel, meant to cancel the Z system, this non perturbative global, and that evolving the discrete uh, gauge from the B minus L and the gravitational anomaly. Any more questions? So why Z mod 16? Oh, the class is Z mod 16 because this turns out it's related to this uh, classification of the uh, Z4 symmetry, uh, B minus L type of Z4 symmetry in general. Well, with the spin structure of the manifold and and then such the spin and the z4 they show the fermion parity subgroup and in that sense if we write this z4 symmetry generator is called x or some b minus l like the symmetry then the x square is minus one fermion parity and with this symmetry the uh cobordism group classification of anomaly in four dimension is enumerated by uh for this uh, global non perturbative anomalies, enumerated by the finite group part or the torsion part of this, uh, which will be just the bodism group of this phi d, this spin z4 mod z2 symmetry, and this will be z16. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And another thing, more further things I will mention positive in the very end is that uh, this is related to the uh, 4D uh, spin plus z16 uh, by the Smith map or Smith homomorphism. And this one is more widely known in the condensed matter or QFT stream people literature. This is basically the classification of the uh, topological superconductor in 3 plus 1D. So in our cases, we are doing the five dimension, which is 4 plus 1D, right? In the condensed matter, it's doing the 3 plus 1. And the pin plus requires the anti-unitary T squared equal to minus 1 F symmetry. While the uh, Z4 here is the discrete B minus L S squared equal to minus F. And certainly, you might question why the Z4 discrete B minus L is important. Uh, I haven't even write down Z4 precisely, but I think something I just saying that the Z4 is, is, is not that important because we can actually change the Z4 to Z4N as long as it's larger than 4, and but it's uh, some power of a 2 torsion, which is 2 to the power, like a Z4, Z8, then that's fine. There's content some Z16 or Z32, etc. There's uh, analogous terms that one can constrain the global anomaly, but you cannot just be a Z2 subgroup because that will just overlap with fermion parity and that anomaly will not be there. But in any case, as long as there's some discrete B minus L preserve, is good. But you can imagine this discrete, this Z4 is somehow reasonable because a lot of uh, BSM, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, called this a non renormalizable or irrelevant term. That when we aid in the BSM, sometimes is dominantly by writing the full fermion type of interaction term, and that will still preserve the Z4. So, which means a lot of BSM deformation preserve the Z4 symmetry, which is consistent with the fact that I want to preserve uh, the B minus L. Okay, I think I'm slow on my introduction. Any more Sorry, questions? It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. delayed anyway. Can I just ask another question here? I, I didn't yeah. get the answer here. So, B minus L a priori is a U1 symmetry, isn't it? How does it? Well, yeah, so you know, we start with some classical thinking about B minus L as a U1, that's true. And 
but if B, you want B minus so if it's U one, then we'll see the B minus so photon, just like the B minus, uh, just like a U one EM has a photon, right? But we don't see such a photon. So, so presumably B minus so perhaps can be just a global symmetry. But if B minus L is still preserved to high energy, and if you believe quantum gravity reason no global symmetry in quantum gravity, or quantum gravity, then you want B minus L must be gauge. But we still didn't see the photon at low energy, so something must be wrong when B minus L is preserved as a full U1. However, there's no problem to consider only the discrete B minus L. But it's convenient a lot of time when we enumerate anomaly calculations through Feynman graph, we keep a U1 B minus L. That's easier to compute it than the discrete some of the global anomaly. So that's why people are like to think U1 B minus L. But 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 you will see that yeah, you will see that it's it's actually uh some of the anomaly will descend from this U1 B minus L down to this discrete Z4 B minus L. But the anomaly structure will change from Z class, which is perturbative anomaly, to the Z16, which is a non perturbative global anomaly. Yeah. Right, but and, yeah, go, go ahead. So, if I understood you well, you're saying it's a hypothesis that B minus L is actually discrete symmetry, so some strictly proof, I suppose. So yes. Did you, yes. Did you explain why Z six? I mean, what? Yes. Right? yes. So, so I yeah, guess the, the X square argument was to, to motivate Z to the four n. Anyway, okay, just sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think you get the idea. I also this assumption two slides earlier, so you can uh, we can look back later. But 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 then we just say a word, say this theory look like this. But is there a consequence? Uh, I need to introduce the ticket structure next. But let me just give some people who say, oh, you are not just proposing a theory without uh, experimental verification, so possible way to even do a sole experiment. I'll say the different, because once the right hand neutrino is removed, or some of them are removed, then the 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 conventional way we are thinking about neutrino get a small mass, it will be question again, how, how, you, how the neutrino gas mass. And by what neutrino gas mass is the one that already been observed, the left hand neutrino, they have a small, tiny mass in some, some way. And people usually hypothesize that this uh, left hand neutrino uh, may pair with right hand neutrino in some way as a conventional CISO mechanism. And you introduce the right hand neutrinos. And then you enlarge the mass matrix such that the off-diagonal pairing is the mass from the Dirac mass type, which is left and right handed particle, bio fermion coupled through the quadratic mass term, but the stereo mass term is the Murana mass term of the right hand neutrino by themselves. If you solve the mass eigen state and also the, the mass eigen value of this matrix, then you will find out some uh, simple analysis that the scale of the small eigen value is basically set by this Dirac mass square divided by this the large Marana mass, and which will be much smaller than the raw mass scale. And people like this scenario a lot. So that's why stereo right hand neutrino is a very popular thing or scenario. But because I will propose that some right hand neutrino may be removed. So the reason the neutrino gas mass might be very different. I should also mention that my scenario is different from uh, some people using generalized global symmetry to give a uh, neutrino small mass. I think in that scenario, the Dirac and Marana mass still get evolved there. But in my case, uh, I, I'm th th thinking more like a, a scheme or a proposal in a general way that neutrino may get a mass totally different from Dirac and Marana mass mechanism. So it's in contrast with CISO. Uh, you can imagine with all the t curve sectors, perhaps all the left neutrino all are massless. It's a biofermion. But in the inclusion, inclusion of the TQFT new sectors, which that replace the, the right hand neutrino, they feel the medium, uh, they may have some topological defects. And these defects need to be clarified better later or maybe in the future. But one thing to think about this, the Z4 B minus L symmetry uh, has a symmetry, discrete symmetry, so they can form a discrete uh, symmetry defects. And these defects might be point-like or maybe loop-like and there is a lot of details of uh, need to, to need to explain. It depends on signal TQT. But right now, let me just draw uh, some point, and you can imagine it's possible. It can be a, a loop, and that defect is formed by the Z4 texture, let's say, of the B minus L as one scenario. And if you solve the vortex structure, uh, some of the people have been familiar is that the TQT has a gap below the low energy TQT. There's uh, a TQT sectors, but ab above the gap, there's a uh, anion 
or any other strings excitations, which are the endpoint of the wall line or the loop and loop end of the wall sheet to the main wall sheet. So that's the line surface operator, 1D line, 2D surface of integral T. Then if you solve the spectrum gap, there is actually a so-called vortex sub gap. That scale is actually much smaller than TQFT. If you do a dimensional analysis between the TQFT and sub gap scale, and possibly higher energy cutoff scale, you can actually obtain similar scenario such that it, it actually give a, uh, several different this, uh, scales above in TQFT uh, square over the color scale, some of the color scale. Not necessarily God, but here it can be God or punk scale, let's say. It can be any higher energy color scale. And, and this is also the subgate scale between this uh, vortex subgate over the TQFT gap. So there's uh, several possible scale just through the vortex structure. So this might be far-fetching, but thinking about the possibility here is that perhaps neutrino get a mass not through the uh, coupling, uh, through this dirac marana mass, quadratic pairing, but some kind of interference between the neutrinos to the other hidden BSM sectors. And the reason the neutrino is the, the better candidate to detect this is because the neutrino hardly interact with other things, other things like uh, you definitely neutrino interact weakly with SU2. So we know that billions of uh, neutrino are passing our body, I think countless, many, many neutrino are passing our body every second, right? The left neutrino, but we hardly detect or feel anything. So same thing, the left neutrino can pass the medium, but somehow you, you have an interaction through the discrete beam cell with the defects. So there is a, a interference of the this neutrino with this vortex of gas structure, and that can give us some energy scale. So there's an analogy to this, to a superconductor sub in the vortex of gas, which will be a scale as the superconductor gap over the Fermi energy. So I'm making this analogy as kind of a far uh this uh, maybe a motivation to think about this question, the neutrino mass scenario. And so for now, I'll go to even more precise, but uh, let's, let's for now, any more question? What does it mean to replace a neutrino? Oh, yes. By, yeah, yes. So re replace means. Replace neutrino by yes. symmetry. The neutrino is a fermion. The symmetry would be. Oh, no, no, not, not replace the neutrino by symmetry. Replace <laughs> right neutrino. So, the vacuum with right neutrino to the vacuum with TQFT. So the, the, the situation is a right neutrino carries some anomaly index, uh, which will be 1 mass 16, which I will show. And there's some TQFT can saturate some of the anomaly with subject to some constraint. So they will also carry this Z16 anomaly, right? Uh, so so let, let, let me show that. Is, is this answer satisfactory? So- Yeah, so you're okay. not actually replacing the neutrino, you're just saying the anomaly that would be carried by the neutrino is now carried by the symmetry? Yeah, yeah. Let, let me make an analogy. So in condensed matter, people study the topological superconductor and see the dispersion relation of the superconductors. And these are gapless spectrum comb, and you can gap it. So these are analogous to what we have used in the uh, standard model. And what I'm saying is that if we don't find any such a neutrino or this, uh, this uh, fermions, gapless fermion, gap fermion of some, some type to cancel the anomaly from topological superconductor, then there's uh, another possibility uh, advocates by Santo uh, Vishwana uh, in 2012 first, I think, by reviewing this paper say that, that you can have a TQFT uh, topological order surface on the surface as a boundary state of the superconductor, such that this topological order actually preserve the symmetry of the bulk. So usually one may think only gap this phase, gap this series possible to preserve symmetry, but it's actually not true. You can have a gap phase on the boundary preserve the symmetry and such that this TQFT is, is symmetric, but symmetry preserving, but it's anomalous. So, so when I say replace right-hand neutrino means that you certainly write some Lagrangian term with this right-hand neutrino aided, and there's a, a way you can create this particles everywhere, which is part of vacua. You, you create such excitations in some way as you pair create fermions, follow the rule of the QFT. But right now I say, suppose that is forbidden or not found in the vacuum, then there's another possibility that's possible. And then it still generates some energy gap instead of the Marana mass gap of the, the fermions, or the, the, the mass gap of the fermions, the quadratic fermion mass term, you can have a TQFD gap. Well, TQFD is low energy, but there's an energy gap excitation. Then above the gap, actually, there's a 
lion surface operator of D-backs that cause more energy and then they, they have the the subgradient statistics computed by link invariant of lion surface linking four manifold, five manifold. So that's a scenario. So it's important this picture changed the vacuum uh, proposal from what we usually thought about to something very different. Yeah. And this Z thing class I, I kind of mentioned this uh, actually now it's uh, known as Atia Patuti Singer eta invariant. It's known for mathematician for long, but just, just to phrase it correctly. In this anomaly cancellation scenario, it's actually uh, it's a topological version of Green Schwartz mechanism. Uh, some high energy people start to call that way, but in condensed matter, it's called the uh, boundary topological order. Okay, so in between, actually, I skipped some slides, but I think it's in the interest of time, actually, it's good to skip that those slides. And let me just directly give you an answer. The, the picture I draw here is the condensed matter version, it's a 2 plus 1d boundary or 3 plus 1d topological superconductor. But in, in, in our case, in the standard model with 3 plus 1d boundary of a 4 plus 1d topological superconductor, actually, I think a wheelchair Z point out this discrete Z4, and I think Weinberg also has some paper on this, uh, baryon minus lepton discrete Z4, they analyzed the nuclear uh, decay, and I think they somehow found this interesting symmetry. And these people, um, uh, this uh, quote here, Miguel Montero and uh, this uh, Yankee, I think, they actually relate this Z4 to the Z system class, but they didn't question the this uh, availability of the right hand neutrino. They just think the right hand neutrino are layer. And we also have some consequent work at that time about this uh, the discrete, discrete Z4 symmetry and uh, the anomaly. But today, and the, the focus of first part is actually emphasize this might be the, the, the possible scenario and which will give a lot of window new room. Okay, I hope this is clear. So let me say a few words about the plane. Uh, I, I actually give a picture of the first part of the talk and I just need to fill in detail about this anomaly. So the original anomaly within compute from the Feynman graph is actually a Z class, a two of the Z class anomaly. It's a, you will see that, and then we'll introduce the Z system class to that. And then we'll start to connect the index theorem to the cobordism maybe quickly. And then we will just fill in the story how the QFT can couple to TQFT in this together. And then the second part, I will go to some of the non inverter symmetry interpretation of the same phenomena, actually. So these two actually is complementary. You can choose if you like to have a more new phenomena, then you can actually focus more on thinking about this one. If you like to have some more mass uh, structure explore in the recent development, then you can look into this work. And personally, I take this one, even think it's more rich and which actually receive less attention. However, this one is very popular, but I actually question, so far we haven't been able to say too much uh, new physics, although there's uh, some interesting uh, mathematics come out. Okay. And in the context, I was drawing the standard model in one family, now putting a table and the representations given here. So everything I do in my talk will follow everything discovered, including the every quarks, including the T quarks and the Higgs. Everything discovered is there, but the right hand neutrino haven't been discovered. So I was questioning that. And all these are vial fermions in, in the left handed basis. So two component left handed spin three comma one and three family of them. And we are questioning the stable right hand neutrino. And the the global anomaly uh, of and of play a role for the standard model and God is what Green Unified series, what we are checking. And what we do is actually just uh, really write down representation carefully and look into the symmetry. And one thing uh, I want to emphasize is that although the B minus L itself uh, looks kind of arbitrary looking, uh, in a sense, it's, it's not quite arbitrary, but it's at least it coupled to quarks in a certain way and lepton in a certain way, and their number looks different, but there is a, a rescale version of that by com combining B minus L with this electroweak hypercharge, uh, which I denote Y tilde. And combining this to a linear combination then can give this U1X symmetry, and that can be an uh, interesting symmetry for SU5 got. But what we need actually is not a full U1 of this X, but a discrete Z4. And it turns out every coin and lepton will have a charge one. And this Z4 will sit nicely also at the center of the spin 10, because Z4 is the center of spin 10. And charge one 
uh, means that they are actually the same 16 multiplied in the spin 10. Okay, so this is the data. And the three of this missing one has the index, which I will uh, mention is the minus three plus the three of the right-hand neutrino number. Because this number may not be one, so the index is not canceled. And there is a anomaly we can capture by some one higher dimensional topological term uh, known as invertible topological field theory. Invertible in the sense, the partition function will be uh, written as the U1 phase with a known uh, one, and we'll write it down. So with that, then we go back to this introduction of the, uh, this, uh, in introducing this, this uh, scenario that we have this potentially new sectors. Okay, then I'll speed up. Any more question? So the combined scenario is that the QFT sectors, everything used now um, with this hidden sectors now combined together, and then we'll pull this theory on some curve space time, and it, it can uh, suffer or uh, experience gravity, right? Uh, if there's a condensed matter audience, they should have some understanding. This actually has some analogy to this uh, Lipschitz multi theory uh, in condensed matter, say, topological order may cancel some an anomaly in condensed matter. And it actually has this analogy in some sense in high TC uh, superconductor scenario of uh, some work of a Sophia Sachdev at Harvard. Uh, he proposed to look at phase may have a hidden topological order. So in his case, he's looking at the pseudo gap phase and, and propose uh, some anomalous phenomena cannot be easily explained without having topological order hidden there. But in, in the case I'm doing for the BSM is that like, uh, in the standard model, perhaps without right-hand neutrino, we do have a uh, room for 18 new sectors. And they may form part of a basis for some portion of the dark matter if they are there, because they, they are heavy uh, gap sectors for TQFT, okay. And I think this part I already go through. So if I put this together later on, I will, I will draw some picture like this. You should imagine a vacuum other than point particle and some gauge force of the uh, line operator from the young mills, so Maxwell theory. There's an additional line surface out of, construct out of this TQFT. And there's an analogy for this Marana chain uh, study by Dehowski, Kitab in one plus one D, but here, uh, we will need to construct some TKFT out of this, some, some similar phenomena and call this, because the guitar chain in mass is called off brown cavalry invariant. But right now I'm, I'm kind of just sketch and then I'll go, go more detail. Okay. So, so there's a, a really a lot of more things to say, but I will just say that usually people use Anderson Higgs symmetry breaking mechanism to think about mass, but the construction of this uh, TQFT actually requires some mechanism uh, called symmetry extension, and I'll say a bit more. Uh, this is some work, I'll, I'll say, uh, starting with a work of Witten, and, uh, and my work with Wen and Witten, basically we try to construct the boundary state of the SPT uh, symmetry potential states and preserving symmetry, we use the extension construction, uh, which is in control with Anderson Higgs breaking, and then and then such scenario can give a, a consistent boundary type. Yeah, so the whole picture put put together like this, and there's uh, some invariant uh, look at the Z system class uh, written as this, as some Bodhism group phi D, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, so so. Let, let me let me fill in the first part again. I'm almost done with the first part. Is that one thing is that uh, the the B minus L layer uh, is the start with uh, the the one you, you some some of the audience nicely questioned the U one B minus L. Then you can actually compute the, the Feynman graph. And there's a U one cube pure anomaly and U one gravity square anomaly. The coefficient can be checked. Uh, it's actually just evolving the right hand neutrino and the the family or generation number. So this is a coefficient. So in some sense, baryon itself and lepton uh, has a different consequence. Baryon is not conserved under this two anomaly. And the, oh, sorry, baryon is, baryon, sorry, baryon does not suffer from the gravitational anomaly, sorry. But the lepton does, sorry, sorry for misspoken. But lepton, not current, does. And baryon minus lepton, which is the better symmetry in the standard model, also suffer from this when the, family and the right hand neutrino number are not match. And people in the past use this way of thinking to give a lepton genesis. 
uh, from perhaps from the right-hand neutrino. It's called gravitational lepton genesis. But in the in the in the way we do here, uh, we try to propose the alternative scenario, possibly without right-hand neutrino. Right, and uh, there's some part I think I need to uh, just give you the answer. Say that you can really capture things by computing the anomaly polynomial out of construct from this uh, ALU genus and the uh, chunk character of this uh, this uh, gauge bundle, and they are written as chunk class, CJ chunk class, and P PJ is a Pomeranian class. The most important one is the P1 and C1 square C2 etc. And there's a relation between P1 and the trace of this uh, curvature two form tensor R which R. And there's a trend class first and second related to trace F or trace F which F. And then if you compute the standard model of non polynomial by plugging the representation of the vial fermions, you get this, this answer at the bottom. And this is exactly interpreted as the computation of the Feynman graph. And uh, just a few of them is not vanish. In particular, the one I show, the this two, b minus l cube and b minus gravity square, and that can be interpreted as the this uh, ABJ anomaly type of statement of the continuous currents not conserved due to this uh, this background field, and certainly this background field is turned out to be dynamical in the standard model for the U one SU two. But for the gravitational part, we can view this gravitational part as a background. And then we combine everything to get this B minus L type of the current. And more precisely, to normalize B properly, you need to write quark number Q. Then the, the L need to model by NC. So this will be the, the, the answer for the, the anomaly in, in terms of a ABJ type of a statement. But that can be written as a 5D invertible field theory in this form as some U1 gauge field and then coupled with C1 square and P1 term and with this coefficient. Okay, so and a comment is that the computation from this perturbative local anomaly actually uh, require the, the 4D theory has this structure, spin U1 mod Z2, and known as a spin C structure, and which actually for full manifold, you have the spin C structure. In addition, we also input a, a standard model group, a GSM group, and there are some several version possible as user as U2 U1 mod on ZQ case, and this all scenario are included in, in these computations, and they show the same result, at least for this type of anomaly. But then there's also the uh, anomaly once you break down this U1, or just consider not U1, but just Z4. Okay. I say that you can consider U1 break down Z4 as a convenient way um, people were doing, I think audience was asking, but you can just start with Z4. And a, a difference is that actually you can think even the UV theory, I don't even require a UV series start with a U1 B minus L and Higgs down to a Z4. You can even just hypothetically thinking the Z4 is actually the final UV Z4 symmetry uh, that is gauge at DBUV. So 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 that, that's a, another possibility. Right. And in either case, the computation result will show that the the two of a Z, Z square, Z class, the, this has a in general the U1 cube has a Z index and Z class and U1 gravity square so Z class and then they will become a Z system class and written as this form. Okay. So uh, then this 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 uh, co computation essentially uh, verify also actually even before uh, by uh, by uh, some of our work I present in the way of using this earlier using this uh, perturbative local anomaly but we do check the cobaltism. And so this is informed by Fred Hopkins, and we have a way to write down this cobaltism group uh, in terms of combining the data of both this group of torsion part in D dimension and free part uh, in D plus one. I think uh, some of you probably seen this uh, the uh, seminar on this uh, TMF by this uh, uh, Mayashita. Right. So you, you might yes. be familiar with this uh, cobaltism type of statement. So what I want to highlight is that by reading this cobaltism group, we can actually re read this uh, anomaly class. And actually what is playing the role is this, uh, the, the red one, the Z16, and some of the Z class here. There's some other works of a Z2 class uh, did in my other work. Uh, it's actually this one's relatively new SU2 anomaly. When you change SU2 as spin 3 to spin 10. But today I'm not discussing this. I'm only focusing on this. And there's also other 
many things that is canceled. So we do hope to find more on Harmony. So the standard model may have a lot of DSM possibility to cancel the missing uh, non vanish anomaly, but it turns out that standard model is quite nice. So not much room. So Z16 and such a Z2 might play a role. There's also higher symmetry evolving anomaly I'm not discussing today. Okay, so you can read the data. But but I wanna quickly mention that uh, one thing we really introduced the scenario is that anomaly matching uh, is one way to think anomaly index under RG flow may go to different IR phases, like symmetry breaking or symmetry preserving phases. And uh, I don't have time to enumerate them, but these are some of them are known, like a symmetry breaking gap phase, right? And uh, however, what's new, not being used much in the high energy phenol is actually symmetry preserving gapless or the interacting symmetry preserving such that the anomaly index is zero, the so-called symmetry mass generation. And the, the one we use today is the non perturbative anomaly not cancel by removing right-hand neutrino by adding TQLT centers. So all this low energy IR is, uh, is possible, but in the past, actually people in phenol mostly doing this breaking case and also the free fermion case. If I revert the anomaly index such that we consider the summation to be zero, then these are anomaly cancellations. We want to cancel the anomaly in the sense uh, the addition of a different phases add up together. So in the standard model, we have used this, the Dirac Marana mass and biofermion. And this is drawing green. But what is introduced today is this new possible TQFT or 5D bulk or the CFT sectors. So this is what is new ingredient. And the assumption I take just stay again is that we only really assume standard model, not really much standard model contents and the 15 times three bar from a discover and pre assume this gravy mass will somehow preserve and uh, become become dynamical gauge high energy. So this anomaly evolving BMSL and gravity need to be canceled for full consistency theory to embed into a quantum gravity. And after checking all the anomaly cancellations, uh, this raised the scenario uh, of question, the standard law, this case of this right neutrino is one possibility, which is no problem by itself to cancel the anomaly. But we can have other enumeration I just mentioned in a previous slide. So let me not go into this to, to re repeat again. Uh, so that they will, they will put it together a whole picture like this. And in order to really convince you such things really has a, a, you know, some calculation is that actually there's a lot of constraint. The anomaly cancellation involving this formula of right neutrino and if they are not cancel the three family, then there's additional index come from other things and the air together cancel such that this will be zero mass 16. And they are constrained actually. It turns out Kodoma, Omori, etc. cetera, uh, people try to constrain symmetric gap TQFT. For this z sitting class, turn out the R class cannot cancel, cannot be construct, the TQFT cannot be construct uh, to, to saturate the z sitting anomaly. In a sense, there's no such TQFT possible available. However, for the even class, there's no such no-go constraint. And some of us in the past are discussing this type of anomaly and some of us argue TIQ of DA constructible. And we attempt to construct some of them in my earlier work. And I wanna follow up briefly say uh, in the upcoming work, actually we do uh, have an approach uh, to construct this even class of ZC and TQFT of T uh, with the mention and the Xin Pin Yang. Basically uh, we try out start from Z2 gauge group, Z2 square gauge group and Z4 gauge group, et cetera, and try to construct the possible TQFT. And there's a lot of subtlety. And today I don't think I have a time to report, but we use the tricks uh, in, inspired by condensed matter to map the unitary unsized Z4 symmetry of the B minus L type uh, to this rotational crystalline symmetry. And then by using that tricks, we have some way to make a construction possible. And then certainly once this take of this construct in some way, then you want to write down a Lagrangian theory. And let me show you one version of I write in the previous work of mine. So what happened is that other than standard model scenario of the 
conventional path integral writers, the Young Mills, and the possible theta term for SU3 with probably small theta. This is not really relevant in my work, but at this, this talk so far, but so this is not quite uh, uh, important. But other than that, the we have this vial fermion coupled to SU2 gauge force and uh, the Yukawa Higgs and the uh, Higgs coupled to the uh, Yukawa Higgs term to the vial fermion. Yeah, these are the Higgs term, yes. So uh, what, is, what is new is that uh, the if the B minus L coupled to this uh, vial fermion are discretely gauged, then the vial fermion coupled to this Z4, and then the Z4 will basically be part of the symmetry for the 4D T curve T. And then you can use this Z4 symmetry background field, let me call curly A, and return down some T curve T in certain less familiar form by evolving this up brown cavalry, this Vikowski Kitab Tamarana chain, and with some uh, A cube type of uh, uh, terms, background field term of A. And then there is some BF theory type of terms that evolving one form, one cold chain A field, or two form, two cold chain B field, and certain coupling. And there are some detail of the argument of uh, Poincare dual um, constructions, uh, how to put the ABK with the B field together and uh, there's a lot of details. I really don't have time to go through this, but I want to say that there's an attempt to construct such a TKFT. And certainly I think even to a more mathematical rigorous level of things, there's a lot of things one can do. I think at this moment, this is just one type of a TKFT and with a lot of unknown property. And we have upcoming work to even feel more gap about this and other possible TKFT. And then, with this standard model and this TQFT sector control, then they are coupled to this discrete Z4. They both coupled to this discrete Z4. And the combined ultra unification is saying that this discrete Z4 will uh, be dynamically gauged at uh, some higher energy. So this standard model sector will talk to this hidden sector when the discrete B mass will become gauged. Yes. So at, at this slide, only Z4 is written as some kind of a background field, non-dynamical, but in the end, it's, it should be dynamical. Yeah, I was surprised I'm still slow to explain things. Uh, but hopefully you get a picture. The, the combined picture is putting these two theories of standard model with the hidden sector together, and they will talk to each other through the discrete B minus self forces. And and then that come, come back to my, 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 uh, my first few slides. And uh, I'm going to uh, sketch how is that relevant for this non inverter symmetry from another angle. And before that, is there any question? We have a limited time now. But, but I hope that because we go slower on, on the first part, you, you can follow the logic. If no more question, I suppose uh, you understand the first part of the proposal. The second part is basically uh, evolving uh, first the review uh, the symmetry. And I think a uh, uh, situation is that, uh, you know, nowadays people start to generalize symmetry, thinking about symmetry not form as a symmetry group. In a sense, when we talk about symmetry group, we mean that there is some group element G and they satisfy the group law and you can find the correspondent, the so-called charge operator U and satisfy the group law. In a sense, their fusion rule will satisfy uh, the property. There's a this uh, uh, inverse, and there's an identity element, trivial element, and it's closed, and it's associative. And there's a map between the group element to this uh, symmetry defects or the top the charge operator. But the the non-invertible categorical symmetry is saying that perhaps, and people now believe that we should think charge operator. Uh, follow general fusion rule and form a fusion category. So what happened is that there's actually more subtly there's no no, no longer a correspondence, uh, one to one correspondence between part of the group element, uh, which which in in my case, um, I will mention uh, one particular scenario uh, recently. People like is the focus on the discrete rational subgroup part, which is Q mar Z subgroup part of the U one R mar Z. And such that the, this Q mar Z element has a correspondent uh, to charge operator, but but the operate operator correspondence to the Q mar Z is basically saying that uh, the precise statement is saying that uh, 
these operators are labeled by elements of a certain uh, commutative monoe in our case, okay? And they satisfy, in general, some non-invertible fusion rule. And uh, the, 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 the binary operations of this uh, monoid have a map. There's a suggestive map, a homomorphism from this monoid to this QMAR-Z, and which is a subgroup of the U1. Okay. Uh, so the later part of my talk is that I will going to fill in this U1 as the U1 of the B minus L. And then I will basically say the discrete rational subgroup part, the uh, QMAR-Z is the part actually, uh, originally the U1 part of B minus L is suffered from this uh, gravitational anomaly in the standard model when the right-hand neutrino number is not the same as the family number. But right now, the, the information of this, uh, this slide is saying that actually there's a rational angle subgroup of this U1 uh, can still preserve certain generalized notion symmetries, non invertible symmetry. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think I want to uh, give the information of saying that the, the QED example is the uh, the one that people first construct uh, using this uh, this idea uh, based on work of uh, these people, Cho Lim Shao and uh, Cordova Omori. They did the case of uh, ABG anomaly for uh, U1 QED with this, uh, the actual symmetry of U1 under the, the gauge the U1 of the U1 gauge theory that basically has the actual current non-conservations up to this FOHF. So that's the signature of the anomaly. So usually the situation by saying that is that the, the current operator, you know, constructed by fermion field, sidebar, gamma phi is gamma mu psi. This operator means it's already uh, not a, a topological operator in the sense that the small deformation of this current now will subject to FOHF. Uh, that means that the, on one hand, the, the, on one hand, this symmetry suffer from anomaly. On the other hand, this operator basically is not topological. And so what these people did in 2022, last year, is saying there's a construction of this current, a uh, modified current, and makes sense of this statement saying that if I reconstruct current as this way, there, there's still some, some version of conservations and also some version of topological operator I can define. Okay. So, uh, but, but then we need to make sense of this statement. Say, uh, how do I write down uh, this, uh, this, uh, current substrate some, some of the transdiamond like term. Uh, yeah, so in, in this slide, basically, um, uh, one way to proceed is saying that the, the U1 of this actual part of this invertible symmetry uh, is broken by ABG anomaly, but the, the QMAR-Z part of the subgroup actually uh, Will, will be revived as a non-invertible symmetry next. Okay. And we want to construct the, the legal or make sense charge operator in the in the in the three dimensions. So yeah, so so let, let me just say again. So the current is a is a is a one dimensions, but the star J is a three dimension. So this is the, the three dimensional charge operator. And the symmetry is the zero dimensional symmetry of the U1. Okay. Sorry, Jovan, we're starting to run out of time, so perhaps okay. we could no problem, uh, no problem. converge. Yeah, uh, yeah so, so, so let me okay. skip a few things, and, and then let, let me say what exactly is the logic here. So uh, we have uh, basically the statement earlier, say the anomaly of this uh, some m phone symmetry uh, in, in the case of this talk is focused on this B minus O, so this uh, ordinary zero phone symmetry. And in D dimensions, and classically, we define this operator as the current star J as the, sorry, as the star J as this D minus N minus one, uh, which D equal to four in the space time D equal to four and D minus N minus one is three dimension charge operator. It's not topological. And you can think about this operator uh, putting on this gray area and then there's some deformations of this operator. Then the non-conservation part of this star J is exactly proportional to the 
uh, the integration of f h f in the bulk by Stoke theorem uh, due to the d star j, uh, sorry, d, yeah, d star j is proportional to f h f. Now, the, what we are going to say is that the, this pathology or this anomaly of the theory actually has another life, is that we can actually combine this anomaly of this charge operator, that, that, that some non-conservation once, once the, this uh, non-conservation current due to FYGF, then we can actually decorate the, the charge operator by some TQFT, uh, which are drawn in blue. So the TQFT uh, is drawn in blue and which need to be non-invertible TQFT in order to cancel the anomaly. So this is the, the part of TQFT. And combine with the earlier charge operator together, then this extended bulk that has this uh, F wage F contribution from the first part and second part actually can cancel all. So the main point here is that the anomaly of this charge operator on one side and the anomaly of a TQFT, when they can both uh, leave on a boundary of this 4D deformations, and that that the deformation are filled with this F wager term or some invertible field theory term, then the bulk invertible, invertible field theory can cancel out while left over as the 3D, a new type of a operator, a charge operator, including the original charge operator and the, the decorative TQFT. Okay. So this is the 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 charge operator in in, in gray and uh, combined with the TQFT in blue and this will be the picture. Okay, so the in the next I think just one or two minutes and let me just quickly finish. We just go back to the previous discussion of standard model and then we revisit this anomaly involving the U1 B minus L suffer from the U1 cube anomaly and this uh, U1 gravity anomaly, gravity square, or this P1 trace out wedge anomaly, then we, we try to make sense. Can we shift this right-hand side? That's basically the deformation in this 4D with the current, which is the current of the, the standard model B minus L current of fermions, shift the right-hand side to left-hand side. And such that combine some of the TQFT decorate on the 3D boundary with the original charge operator that be non topological but a combined two of the operators can cancel the anomaly of each other and then such a new design topological uh, topolo operator become topological, right? So this is a picture. And because we are doing gravity, there's some subtlety. We cannot really discuss a full quantum gravity. All we do is actually a background gravity or semi-classical gravity. And the U1 invertible power symmetry was broken by ABJ, but the non-invertible part was the point of the, the second part of my talk is try to revive it. And, and then the full quantum gravity has additional discussion of that. Once this, this non-invertible symmetry operator is constructed, the full quantum gravity must have no global symmetry. So that means the non-invertible symmetry must be broken or dynamical gauged. But this is not the, the main emphasis of the, the later part. So we will just focus on this uh, semi-classical or big one gravity. And there's evolving several steps, but the main point is that shifting the trace R wage R term of the P1 as written as the Stokes theorem as a D uh, with a gravitational transignment on 3D. So, so which means the gravitational transignment in 3 form is living on the boundary of this uh, the P1 or R wage R term. And then if we have a way to combine this gravitational transignment with the original, the charge current star J, from the standard model, then it can make sense possibly as the topological operator. But there's a several step of uh, subtlety. Uh, one of them is that actually there's a framing anomaly evolving with this gravitational transignment three form. So we need to fix that. And the quick answer for this is that we decorate the, the, this, uh, this uh, gravitational transignment three form further with the return rush taking to rod TQFT such that this is corresponding to some rational uh, CFT with some rational central charge C. And there's a constraint between the rational central charge C and the level of the gravitational transformation three form K and the angle U1 we uh, rotate. So the subgroup of this U1, if it's rational, you can find appropriate C and for some K and 
satisfy this constraint. And the punchline is that we can we are able to find appropriate this WRT type of TQFT such that the the variant of the charge operator and variant of the TQFT under the framing uh, choice of framing anomaly that cancel framing anomaly cancel each other. So framing anomaly is the large gauge transformation of the the choosing this field bind. And there's a detail of uh, choosing this as a uh, integer class of pi three SO three, and there's a further detail of uh, original work of Witten and basically correct by and the point out by Atia on this two framing is only required two framing instead of framing and there's also a pure and structure requirement. I think I, I don't, don't really have time to explain that, but let, let me say this, uh, the new version of our paper actually explained this part uh, in, the, in, in, in pretty well. So you can have a look on the paper. So I, I think we're running out of time, so perhaps okay. we can wrap it up with Boston. So, so, yeah, so, so let's, let's basically, let's basically mm -hmm. what I have here. I guess uh, the second part of the talk, uh, once it's complete, is that there is uh, such a, a TQFT decorate together with the gravitational transform three form, and this will be the new modified barrier minus lepton symmetry operator, but this become non invertible. So that's it. And thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions for Jovan? Further questions? Maybe can I try something? So yes. just a remark, just a remark, maybe uh, it's, it's, yeah, maybe not quite a question on what you said, but but isn't uh, it's kind of remarkable that even the standard standard model or not ultra unification already is meant to have have a somewhat mysterious gapped phase, right? That's the confinement mechanism by which somehow the QCD sector develops a mass gap. Is this at all something you have thought about relating? You see oh, what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Okay, thanks for the question. Uh, so, you know, uh, first of all, the QCD confinement is still there within the standard model sectors. So that's not a part, uh, you know, that uh, I contribute in any way, because that's a part, nothing is modified within standard model. So what's new well, is I, that... I, I understand, yeah. I'm just saying, you're saying the kind of hypothetical topological sector which you're invoking. Yes. yes. So it seems a bit similar to to the sector that should actually be there, even in the standard standard model, it might might maybe be worth, you know, looking at as a, sorry, it's just a remark. Yes, uh, so I think one thing, one thing maybe along this line is that the the confinement is actually through a different mechanism, through the young mills gauge force, right? So these are problems of young mill mass gap, but, but the gap for the TQFT is a different, different thing because the there we don't really need young mills. We are we are really discussed more like a discrete gauge for gauge 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 theory, like uh some version of Diagon Witten when it's bosonic, but we we do really require spin structures because we do have fermion in the standard model. So the theory is not quite a bosonic, non-spin Diagon Witten theory, but some kind of a spin version, cobordism, TQFT. And there there's an energy gap in a sense. We do know that the the let me let me show a figure. Yeah, we, we do know that uh, uh, in the theory, even though you have a low energy TQFT, but above at high energy, the TQFT might have a gap. In a sense, that's a way you can insert operators, line surface operator into TQFT. Once you open up the line surface operator, the the the, the line surface operator has endpoints and that endpoints will be the anions, right? So that, that, that's basically the energy to require cost, some cost, we cost energy to open the line surface operator. So, so that's the gap for the TQD setters. And I, I, think, I think it's, it's uh, uh, quite uh, remar re remarkable that uh, if there are such a scenario layer, then the energy gap in that case is actually very different from the energy gap in the young mill theory uh, at least from the way so far we discussed so far like uh, yeah the way we 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 we, we understand so far is like the tqft gap is very different from at least from the young mills theory uh yeah okay. and, very good yeah. great thank I you so 
yeah i hope this answer okay so i think uh this is it thank you so much let's thank uh again. Yeah, thank thanks. You. Good to see you again yeah, I want to say that uh, thanks very much for the opportunity. There, there's a lot of works uh, I actually did, and uh, perhaps in the future I have a chance to visit in person, and maybe it'll be even more efficient for me to explain some of the work. And thank you very much again. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.